What is going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of K Reviews. I hope everybody's having a great day. I have to my right the one and only Lucas. Hello. AKA Lucas J. Ooh, AKA hello. Lucas Jordan. Ooh, ooh. Or whatever you want to call him. Ooh, ooh. Big Daddy. To the right, right, Big Daddy. Big Daddy. <laughs> to the right, right of him, we have Tyler, AKA Loose T. That's right. AKA DJ Atlas. Ooh, ooh. AKA Going Back On In. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Today we're going to be that reviewing part. the brand new Andre 3000 album. Uh, what's it called? New Sun? New Blue Sun? New Blue Sun. That sounds right. Yeah. New, new Blue, Blue Sun. Sun. Um, we haven't heard an album from Andre in two decades. So, well, actually, unless you count Idlewild, which I kind of would. But it's still been about two decades, even if mm, you do count yeah. that. Mm. Um, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. So let's just jump right in. Lucas, I'll start with you. Okay. What were your general thoughts on a two decade hiatus and then we get a flu album? <sighs> oh man. Disappointment For to real? start off with. Okay. Okay. I feel like if I had you, a feeling he was gonna say that. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a hip hop <laughs> fan, you're gonna be disappointed in this. That being said, I think outcast fans have had time to grow. At least some of them in sort of their music taste and you know, they can learn to appreciate what this was, but you know, it's Andre three thousand. Like, you don't want a flute album. You want to hear him spitting something yeah, this is ridiculous, true. or at least singing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, doing something vocal. I I watched the GQ interview before coming here. Okay, I haven't have you guys yet. seen it? No, I haven't watched it. Yet. I no, haven't watched no. it actually. Um, it's pretty interesting and. What he what he's saying makes sense. It's like I he didn't want to do something that was inauthentic to him, like rapping, if yeah. he didn't have anything to rap about. Yeah. And so Which I respect. Yeah. And like you see that with a lot of old rappers now. Like they they want to get back in the game just because they're not, you know, popping anymore. They're broke or something like that. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's super like respectable and honorable to not just put out music just to put out music. Mm -hmm. That being said, I wanted, I wanted a rap album. Yeah. I want a little rappy rap. I feel you. (laughs) I know what you mean, but I can go with that. Yeah. Tyler, you want to give your general thoughts when you, my, my overall, my overall thoughts. Um, I personally like two or three years ago. Started a YouTube channel um, that I call Gautama Studios. Shout out. Gautama Studios. <laughs> Which I'm not trying to shout out at all because it's been inactive. Like, I haven't been posting on it. Okay. Um, I mean, the videos are still up, but I haven't been posting on it. But that's what I did was I made, like, ambient music for oh. people to, like, study or sleep or hike or do whatever. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, that's dope. And so, yeah, so I started doing that. And I, like, kind of made this cool, like, artsy thing about it. And so I wanted that to be, like, my side thing. And plus, Gautama, or, uh, yeah, Gautama Siddhartha. I don't know if you know who that is. Like, oh. the first, or the original Buddha or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, so Gautama Studios, like. Yeah, like, I got you. you. Know? Hell yeah. Um, so that's, that was, like, the thing. So I found it pretty cool because when I was listening to it, I was, like, it was, like, kind of making me want to go back to that. You know, I was, like, this, yeah. this is kind of inspirational for me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but so that was kind of my general thoughts on it. It was, like. It was cool to hear that and just have general inspiration to go back and, like, re-spark something that I used to do in my life, you know? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, best. definitely if, if you're, like, a jazz, like, enthusiast or, you know, sort of fan, this was this was a good album. Yeah. And especially yeah. coming from it Andre was. because he has a certain creative talent to him that is, like, we have never seen anyone replicate before. I would say so. I mm-hmm. mean, yeah. the five runs, five album run with Outkast. Andy has a, one of the best R and B slash pop albums. Andy has now a jazz album. I would say so for yeah. sure. Yeah, and every yeah. single one of those albums, <laughs> dude, super good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I would yeah. agree. Yeah. So it it makes sense, like coming from that perspective of, I I'm into ambient, kind of um, uh, what's what's that genre of like, you know, lo-fi. That's what it's called. That's okay. I, mean, I wouldn't. This, okay. I wouldn't this wasn't, this wasn't really lo-fi, I think, but I think, but that's kind yeah. of where jazz 
um, not stems from, but you know, where lo-fi stems from is, is from jazz. jazz. Like that kind yeah. of feeling. Yeah. That atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I um, would say so. I could see that. Yeah. So it makes sense like hearing that and thinking um, that this is a, a direct route to that genre. Uh, but yeah, I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Well, um, we were even talking about, um, I think it was you and I that were talking about like the sampling. Mm-hmm. And stuff just like, oh, actually, I think it was somebody else. We were talking about how many times artists will sample this album. Uh Like with just like, because you said it's kind of like has that jazzy effect to it and stuff. Yeah. So we were kind of thinking how many artists in the future here, in the near future here, will be sampling this album to like, oh, yeah, use that in their art, you know, a ton. Yeah. I mean, he sampled Minecraft. He in sampled Minecraft? Did he really? Yeah. I did not know this. Song? No, I, he probably didn't. Oh. There's, oh. <laughs> there's a, there's a, uh, I, forget, I forget which song it is. It's I, he. There's a sound in it that sounds like the Minecraft no, motion. I, I know what you yeah, mean. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm I know talking what you about? Mean. That, yeah. I get that feeling from the whole album. Yeah. Like the Minecraft yeah, feeling. Yeah, no. Now that you mentioned it. I, so, I just want to say, I really, really like the album. Um, okay. But I'm... I'm I wouldn't call myself a jazz enthusiast because I don't want to make it sound like I know a lot about jazz, but I listen right, to a yeah. lot of jazz. Yeah. And like, for the same reasons, I like this album a lot. Um, I was delivering like packages and stuff while I was listening to it. And like, I was around like really pretty scenery, like, because I was delivering to some houses that had like crazy views and stuff like that. Yeah. So it just kind of, it was really like, it was really pretty. Like it made the album even like more beautiful to me, like while I was listening to it, um, in that landscape. And then when I would check the title of the track, I would be like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for real. But yeah, it was, I, I actually really like it for that reason. And I think it's something like, like you can meditate to. Um, mm-hmm. I think like it's a fungus album, if you know what I mean. Like I like Explain. it's a great album to take a certain fungus to. Oh. <laughs> um, okay. And be around some trees. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> There's definitely like a, a sort of visual aspect to it where you can visualize some sort of scenery behind it like outdoorsy or like you know outdoors definitely I've, i'm yeah. i'm connected or i'm i'm on like this part of instagram right now i don't know if you've seen it <laughs> where it, it's like gnomes <laughs> <laughs> it goes into like I'm gnome not. backstories I'm not I'm not. it's okay well it's it's just telling stories about like gnomes and it's kind of like kind of fantasy Almost okay. mm-hmm. like, <laughs> what the no, like the gnome. Just follow me. The okay, gnome. I got you. <laughs> like it'll say the no. Uh, I was walking and I found a troll and okay. It's it's like generated by AI. Oh, okay. You've okay. probably seen it before, or okay, you haven't. Okay. But it gives that kind of feel of like fantasy to it, where you you can just go into a different world. And yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, there's more magic. Um, yeah, yeah, and stuff to it, and it's it's hard to like tell what uh like what kind of world he was going for i guess um well okay with with all of it because it's it's just kind of and he said it on the GQ interview it was like i wish i watched he's, that yeah it's yeah me too actually. i didn't i didn't finish it but um he's a baby at this mm. you know like and you could tell yeah to a certain aspect but also to a certain aspect he's such a professional that he's not going to put out something that isn't clean and, you know, mm. perfect or for a better use of the word. Right. But, um, yeah. At least adequate is what you mean, right? Like, yeah. Yes. Okay. Just clean, you know, fire. Yeah. Something, something immaculate. Um, and it's funny too, cause you were talking about magic and I mean, one of the titles, Gnomes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gnomes and stuff, and all that <laughs> fantasy, all that stuff, right? And uh, uh, that that whole album has titles like that, and like one of the titles is being in Hawaii and turning into a panther, mm-hmm. and then yeah, you know, I read, I did making, read the backstory on that one. Yeah, oh, you read the backstory on that? Just as it's a sh- so he said that he took, I think it was LSD, okay. in Hawaii, <laughs> nice. and then he just started purring. Yeah. And then I guess that's where yeah. that title came from. Yeah. I just read like a quick anecdote on yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he said like couldn't control him or something. He was just like naturally. Did purring. you notice yeah. the did you notice the purring in the fucking yeah. track? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
There was, was was that actually him? It didn't sound. I don't think human. so. I think it was real. I think it, I okay. think they got a like a stock sound. Of okay, a it was panther. probably just mm. it was inspired by something he actually did. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming this man was in Hawaii off the acid, just yeah, <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, the, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. what panther how to do it, but yeah, no, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I fuck with I fuck with this album though. It is I, it is good. Yes. He, yeah, I agree. He even had like, um, the, like the purring and stuff in that song, and he had like breathing in other songs mm-hmm. too. I don't know if you noticed that. So that, that's yeah. that's kind of one of the reasons that I had the idea. It was good for meditation. It is, yeah. It, you know, had the breathing in the background. And so yeah, that like, freaked me out for a second when I first heard it. I because I, I started I started breathing with him, and I was like, wow, "What's <laughs> going on?" <laughs> that's yeah, the point. Yeah. Man. <laughs> the first time that I heard it, my coincidentally, my breath. My inhale happened to match it. Yeah. And so I thought Whoa. it was me and I was like, <laughs> I was yeah. like what, what the, the hell fuck? was that? Yeah. But then it, it like kept happening and I was like, oh, that was the song. I was like, that was so weird though. Cause uh, like I wasn't hearing myself breathing, but then all of a sudden I heard that and I was like, yo, I'm tripping off this. But yeah. It was, yeah. It was good. Yeah. I do see what you mean though, like about being disappointed that it's not a rap album. Cause yeah. when you first sent the link to the group chat, I was like, dog. I've been waiting for this yeah. for 20 years. Yeah. Like I was so excited. And then I read the, I don't, I don't remember what art, like what website it was, but I read a, that it was just a flutes album. Yeah. And a part of me, I came around to it. Cause like, I do like jazz and everything. And I was like, okay, yeah. Andre wouldn't put it out if he wasn't confident in it. Oh, yeah. So I was like, I, I did come around to the idea eventually. And just like, okay, this isn't the Andre album I thought I was going to get, but like, I'll, I'll accept it as is. Um, yeah, but I understand what you mean though, because yeah. like I definitely felt that disappointment, and still kind of do. Like I still want that Andre album. Like he didn't give us the album we've been waiting twenty years for, even though he gave us a album. Yeah, yeah. and it's kind of it is exciting in a way because you can't just put out an album like this and then not put out something else. You yeah. know, especially mm-hmm. the type of person he is. I feel like he will though. I feel like that's exactly what he's gonna you do. Think yeah. he will? You see, I, he no, will. like I feel like he won't. Like I feel like he's gonna just do this and this and disappear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, okay. Yeah. I was gonna say because that's, what, that's yeah. what I think too. Yeah. If if I was him, at least, you know, you can't you can't do that because you have this fan base of people who like hip hop, and like I was saying before, maybe their music taste has matured since then, and they can learn to appreciate stuff like this. At least that's what happened with me. Like I, I, I was with you. Like I, when I heard it was a flute album, I was like, eh. and I was like, yeah, but you know, you get, you got to be open minded yeah. a little bit. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, uh, it's not a huge disappointment in the fact that if he does, if he doesn't put out more albums mm-hmm. in in this realm, then it's a waste. You think it's a waste? Sense. No, uh, if he if he stops right now, it, this album was a waste. I disagree with that. I think he has to keep going to show he can progress in this, you know, realm of music in this genre. He has to progress in his flute skills. Yeah, yeah. He <laughs> has. To I sh- would love for that to happen. <laughs> yeah, I would love for him to keep going. Just become the flute master, like, and keep progressing with it. Yeah. Well, why why, why do you disagree? Why do you not think it's a waste? I just went. I wouldn't call if it a waste because I, I still I'm, think I think this is an album that like, like okay so for example like a bunch of music dropped on the same day that this dropped right yeah mm. of all of the albums that dropped which one could I possibly see myself still listening to 30 years from now it's this one and like maybe that's because I already like jazz music mm. and yeah everything yeah but like I don't know I just I, th- I don't think this album's a waste if nothing comes after it like I think this album was I'm not going to say, like, worth the wait, because like you said, I wanted a rap album. But I, I liked it, and I think I think it's, like, has its place in, yeah. in music, regardless of whatever happens after it. I think it definitely has its place in music. However, the, the uh, legacy that Andre's built with OutKast, is it, I think it'll be tainted by this. By this album, tainted. If he doesn't continue, if he doesn't okay. continue, interesting. Because then it it just kind of there's a point where your creativity lapses and becomes pretentiousness. You think that's this album came off as pretentious? No, 
Oh, okay. Not if he continues. But if what he if he continues? Because he showed us that this is something that he's not used to, that he can start doing now. Uh-huh. And if, so, if, he, if he doesn't continue after this, it just looks like, you know, a, a, a grab at the spotlight once again. For, and for what? So you think Love Below was a waste then? Because like Love Below, no. he never he never did th- like that again. Like he never made another pop album afterwards. But I yeah, still think. But it's it was the momentum that the previous albums gave him uh-huh. that allowed him to do that because he had that fan base with him, mm-hmm. and they could the kind of like the so how you his just mean from like a commercial success standpoint or like um. Or, like, you mean, like, in general, like... I mean, I kind of take it to, like, Lauryn Hill a little bit. Lauryn Hill has been touring, right? And I was going to go to her concert, and then I started hearing that she was, like, dropping out and, like, not showing up and stuff. Yeah, like, you can't do that, especially if people paid to come see, you know, your... This is true. You're, you do your stuff, and that's where the pretentious happens. Is like creativity goes into pretend pretentiousism. I don't know if that's a word, <laughs> but she thinks that she's so creative that she can do this when really she's just being selfish about it. I don't know. Does that makes sense. I could I could see that perspective. I just don't know. I don't. I want to jump to the assumption that that's what's happening. Like I don't know what's happening. Like I'm not assuming yeah. that's happening. Yeah. Well, especially because if I could, if I could, like, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Especially because, because he even said like he wanted to give us a rap album. Yeah. But he said that this is just like all he could produce at this time was just like mm-hmm. some really peaceful stuff. Like he couldn't even. I guess he couldn't even speak a single word. <laughs> like, yeah. You know. And yeah. that's what I. That's what I. I get that part about, and that's what I said like earlier. Like that's honorable. Like if if you can't make a rap album, don't force it. Right. Mm. You made this album, and it's good. But We're now, just saying but at now some point what? he does like, have to. He yeah. Should if give you don't show album. us that you can progress, then you've shown us nothing. Mm. You know what I mean? What if, it's kind of like I think this album like, shows progression, though. Like I think this. No one thought he would do this. Yeah. Like, especially not more than just a few years ago. Yeah, like once we saw him walking around with the flute, maybe some people thought, yeah. "Oh, we're gonna get a flute album from Andre." Like I can see people <laughs> thinking that then. Right. Yeah. But, like, no one saw this coming. So, like, I think this shows progression. Like, even if he doesn't continue with jazz stuff, I still feel like, I don't know, because I, I feel like it's the same perspective of, like, Tyler said he wants to make a jazz album at some point. I think if Tyler makes one jazz album and doesn't again, yeah, I don't think that's a waste. I don't think the the jazz album or the jazz EP that Mac Miller made is, like, a waste, even though he never did it again. Yeah, I, I guess what I'm saying is it's a disservice. It's a disservice to your fans. And, I mean, obviously he doesn't owe anyone anything yeah Mm. but it just comes off pretentious that's and that's i disagree i think it comes off authentic i think it comes off as this is who he is this is where he is right now like this is this is just where he is in his life yeah this is where he is (laughs) but even if you're like say i'm my wife sews say i start sewing now okay and within a month i can make a dress a really nice dress okay and then 10 years later, I, you come to me and you're like, hey, how's your sewing been going? And I'm like, oh, check this dress out. And it's the same dress that I made 10 years ago. Uh-huh. There's no progression. I, I, I haven't showed you that this has been a worthwhile hobby. Why should you pay attention to my sewing anymore? Well, I don't. I don't think Andre cares if people pays attention to his sewing. I think he just wants to sew and just figures he'll <laughs> no, I'll I put it out. Then there, there wouldn't be any point. There was no promotion for this. He just said, "I'm dropping an album," and then it came out literally five days later. Like, yeah, well, that's the pro- okay. So here's here's where I got you, motherfucker. In the GQ, <laughs> in, the, in the GQ interview, in the GQ interview, he told the interviewer <laughs> that he put out projects yeah. under a pseudonym. And under different artists' names. Wait, oh. I don't think he said that. Because I, th- I saw say, that clip. Did you said, did you watch the interview with I him? S- no, but I saw that clip. And he said yeah. that um, he, like, played the flute on, like, artists, like, actual stuff. But he didn't say he put out full projects under, he did p- say that. under people's names. He did say that. 
So who? Because he said these were known artists. So who's yeah. a known artist that put out a flute album recently? Probably known flute artists. I mean, do you know any flute artists? I thought oh, I, I figured other than, other than Andre because I saw people saying he played on Skyline Two by Frank Ocean, and I saw people saying he played on like this Jid song, and like yeah. and granted they could have just been making shit up, but yeah. like but I thought it was more that kind was of that stuff. what it was though because I was because he the said impression he didn't that it meant that he like instead of being Andre Three Thousand he changed his name and would put out a jazz project under that name, and then he would change his name again and put out another like flute project under that. That's what I was under the impression. That's, but he said it was under yeah. the name of well-known artists, though. like, And they were cool with keeping it a secret. Like, the artists he was releasing it under were cool with keeping it a secret that it was Andre. Yeah. Because he, he wanted to oh, dip his feet in and see how people would react to he, it. He kind of, he said both. He said that he put it under well-known artists and that he just put random stuff out under different names. Oh, okay, oh, okay, okay, okay. So, why not do that with this album? Why put it under his name? Maybe now? this one was more personal to him. I don't know, man. I'm not. I'm not in his head. I just don't want well, to. I just don't want to assume mm. it's a pretentious thing because it doesn't feel that. When I listen to this album, it doesn't feel like a pretentious thing. Like, I'm not. I'm not saying it's pretentious mm. yet. Just only if he doesn't continue. Only if he doesn't continue. Only if, if he doesn't show us this progression. He doesn't show us a new dress. Oh, agree to disagree then. I think honestly, this. I think honestly, this I dress is. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think this dress is cool, bro. Whether whether another dress comes afterwards. I do too. Or no, I I like it. I he like has, the he album. Has many beautiful dresses. <laughs> yeah, well, I love how dresses are. Right? <laughs> 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 um, I mean, I. It doesn't take away that this was a great album and that he obviously still has talent and dedication to his craft. Which is admirable, you know. I mean, yeah. Because if I wouldn't even say that, I think this is just something that he happened to make and then was like, "I'll put it out." Mm. Um, I don't think I don't I don't think he was like, "I'm gonna make a flute album and set out to do it." I think he just started was just doing naturally what he was doing, and then he was like, "You know what? I have this now." Well, he worked with other people. Yeah, but that he was just making like it was all improv. They were just getting together and making music. I don't and yeah. In the article I read, like it said, there wasn't like a planned thing that he was gonna make a flute album. Like they just started making music. Yeah. So well, he started. He started, you know, working on his flute. Not theory, but you know, skills. Yeah. And his flute theory. <laughs> his flute theory. <laughs> <laughs> Again, yeah. Anyways. Um, he started working on his flute skills, and obviously something stemmed from working on the flute skills, too. Uh, now I have this collection of music that I want to do something with. Yeah. But even so, he did something with it under his name. Yeah. Now he has, he has to, you know, either put something else out, not immediately, but, you know, there has, he's in the spotlight right now. Kind of, and what but his words were like. I mean, it is number four album right now, isn't it? Yeah, like that. I don't know. Or it like peaked at number four as. That's as pretty this, good. As that is pretty surprising like that. for a jazz. I yeah. mean, it did have. I, his I name. actually don't know that. I think I just saw that on like charting on like my song. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if it was. Actually you can make like, up anything right now, and I, I agree I, with I you. Just, so I just hope. That, yeah, that's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty surprising. <laughs> I didn't. I wouldn't have thought it would have got that high. But it is it's good. It is good. I mean, the probably. That most of that is like just the initial. Oh, Andre three thousand put out a new album mm -hmm. because like I talked about this with one of the guys at work that I work with, who's a Jehovah's Witness, <laughs> like bald white guy in his forties with four kids. Yeah, and I was like, "Did you know Andre three thousand dropped a new album?" He's like, "He did." Like and he knew that guy was excited about it. Okay, you know, so it makes sense. Like his name garners big numbers, yeah. but um. That's just kind of the initial, the initial shock of Andre three thousand put out an album. Everyone has to listen to it now, or you're n nobody. Yeah, I was gonna say, I wonder like what it's at now, cause like yeah, I definitely don't think it would probably stay that high. high. So, someone Whoa. played the first song, and they were like, yeah, people, it probably <laughs> gets, this yeah. isn't for me. Well, yeah. Yeah. and that's a crazy thing too. Is like I think we were talking about open mindedness earlier. You yeah. know, <laughs> like you know, you have to. Especially because he said he said it's not gonna be a rap album, you know, and so yeah. I mean, shit, I was glad the, he was transparent about that because I would have been pissed if it just yeah, dropped he and it was. Has he's to the, be, he's yeah. definitely the king of um, under promise over deliver. 
Over promise, under deliver. Under promise, over deliver. Und- under promise, over yeah. deliver. Okay. He okay. told us it was going to be a flute album. He told us, like, it's just something I made. And it was like. And it was a lot better than, than just something just you a flute album. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It was, I when you it hear, was pre- I, yeah, I think it was pretty good. Man. When you hear, like, I got a flute album, I'm thinking, like, he's <laughs> he's in the back with a recorder. Yeah. No, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> He's that's really raining it in, you know. <laughs> but that's hella funny. Yeah, because yeah, that's kind of what I thought too. When I first like yeah. read that, I was like, "Wait yeah. a minute!" But no, yeah, it definitely was much more like jazz than just like a flute album. Yeah, it, it there was I, concepts. Yeah, 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 there was. Yeah, it was good. There was concepts. Yeah, yeah, which was interesting. Although it's crazy how every song was longer than like ten minutes. Some were twenty, close to twenty minutes. Yeah, which is normal for jazz. Jazz is, is, that really, is yeah, that really? that's normal for jazz. Like that, that album right there, Bitches Brew. Like most of the songs are like twenty minutes, fourteen, twenty minutes, like Dang, that range on there. That's beautiful, actually. And they say that music is getting shorter. I mean, you just got to switch genres, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. Yes, sir. Yeah, it is nice. It is nice to see him do something different. Um, I do wish he would put out a rap album though. That's that's what. That's also the excitement that comes from this is like he is making music. It's only a matter of time until he puts vocals on it. You do know? you do you think he did this as a way to like kill hype around a rap album so that way if he eventually does want to put one out, it there's not this like insane build behind oh, it? Oh yeah. Yeah. That makes a hundred percent that's again, under promise over deliver. Andre is flute guy now. Yeah. Until. And then he puts out a rap album when he's like 60 and everyone's like, yeah. oh, Andre's 60, it's <laughs> yeah. too late now. And See, then it's fine. And that's why he's Talking mad about when Social he, Security. if he won't, he won't deliver. That's why he's mad if he won't deliver. Yeah. Because he, 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 that would be the under promise over deliver philosophy right there. Okay. He put the tip in right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just a little You tease. didn't come yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just he gave you an hour 28 minutes and you still didn't no, 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 no. <laughs> he put the tip in i don't know i just, that's that's it has to it has to lead to something else or it's nothing mm. you know mm. that's my thoughts yeah the harsh the harsh criticisms of of lucas andrade <laughs> what can i say <laughs> so there was a title i think it was but a super crazy um philosophical question i thought said ants to you gods to who yeah i thought that title was really cool like there's a couple titles i was was kind of tripping on that question actually because i was like "Mm." and i i started like thinking about it i started diving deep and i was like holy shit that's crazy but uh what is that what what do you think that would mean to you um like it is interesting you know ants to you so it's a little it reminds me of this this thing i saw the other day um, and it was, you know, Cthulhu. <laughs> Cthulhu. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so you know, devil worshippers, right? They can summon Cthulhu mm. by getting in a circle, okay, and you know, doing like doing a little ritual, ritual whatever. Yeah, yeah. And Cthulhu will come, and they'll ask him, you know, to solve a problem or something, and he'll just kill everyone. Be like, yeah, problem solved. You're welcome. Oh, and so and that's kind of like like if you saw a ring of ants in a circle <laughs> in your kitchen, uh-huh. and they were chanting your name, <laughs> <laughs> huh? <laughs> you, <laughs> you would go over there, right, uh-huh. and you would hear what they have to say. I probably would. And then if they're like, "Hey, we have this problem," you'd be like, "Oh, okay," and then you just stomp on them because <laughs> they're in the middle of your kitchen. You know, you don't. You lost me, dog. Wow. <laughs> I thought. Have you seen this? Wow. No. What? Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> what? No, yeah, that, that makes sense though. I know the Cthulhu like, thing, but like, what does that have to do with the ants to gods to thing? That's. You're, he's That's just what it reminded me. Of. He's, he's putting you in Cthulhu shoes. Because now you. Oh, you're Cthulhu. You are Cthulhu. And when you yes. show up and stomp them. Yes. yes. Oh, and the ants okay. Are I was confused. Yeah, these yes. ants are chanting. I thought you saw them doing the Cthulhu ritual and then you were just like, what the fuck? Why are you doing <laughs> this here? And then you just stomp them out. I didn't realize you were Cthulhu. Yeah, yeah. no, the ants. Yeah. The ants are doing the Cthulhu. That's why they're calling your name. 
So you come over there to what? What are you guys doing? Uh, and they, they give you a problem, so you just <laughs> got you, got you. Okay, I was so lost. So that's what it made me think of. And I don't know what it has to do with it, but right, but it, it puts you in. It puts yeah. You I, get, I guess it's all. It's perspective, really. Is like, it really is. Or even if you like go down, like what if there's something smaller than the ant that looks, you know, at the ant passing by, and it's like. Yeah, Allah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's didn't, what I thought about when I read it. Didn't the the title before have something to do with ants? Also, did it? Um, the title before no, the title before that was Gandhi, Dalai Lama, oh. your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and then oh. slash, uh, Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer. Hold on, I gotta wait for the title to. And then John Wayne Gacy. Yeah, John Wayne Gacy. And John Wayne Gacy. Yeah. yeah. That was crazy too. I do like the titles just because I don't know. It's different. It adds a little like personality yeah. to to the album. Yeah, and because it's just it's just music, really. Mm-hmm. It is music. Yeah. Which is crazy because I was gonna say that I, I don't know about you, but I felt like the songs actually felt like the titles that they were given. I would agree. Like like that one that talks about you know, Gandhi, Jesus Christ, um, who was the other one? Dalai Lama? Dalai, Dalai Lama, yeah. Right, and then compared to the other people who are maybe, like, um, not so on the yeah, like Christ the serial conscious killers. type of side of things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That energy of that song, like, really felt, like, when I was listening to it, it almost felt like I was uh, on a mission to try and, like, explore everything that there is of life. Like, like both yeah. sides... Okay. Of the story, you know, like it felt like there was a push and a pull uh, up and a down. Like it kind of felt like a balance of, of both sides and like you had to explore every single like part of it. You know, that's kind of how it felt to me. And I was like, it's crazy. And that's when I realized like this song really feels like the title that I was given. So I don't know if you guys had that same feeling, but that was pretty like wild to me. Yeah. Yeah. I, that makes sense. I would definitely say I had that feeling for like most of the songs. Like some of them were weird, like the 93 Till Infinity and Beyonce one was kind of confusing yeah, to me. Like, what the fuck yeah. <laughs> um, but, like, obviously the Panther one. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I got I got that impression for, like, a couple different ones. Where, like, when I would think about what the title was while I was listening to it, I would hear a sound or something that kind of related in some way. Yeah. And I would like, be like, okay, I understand why he named it this. Like, it wasn't just a random name that he gave it. Like Right. Like, like, I've, I have a feeling they made the song and put the Panther noises in, and then he titled that. Yeah. Like, I don't think it was like, oh, I don't think the titles came first, and then they made the music. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah. That makes sense. That's interesting. Yeah, I do like that he he made these super long titles in lieu of just putting lyrics on the album. Um, <laughs> like in place of lyrics, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it, at least it wasn't, you know. You can almost read them he, in Andre's he, voice. He really could have reined <laughs> it in on that too. Yeah. Of just like, yeah, this is I don't know, flute sounds with Panther in the back, you know, or something <laughs> stupid like that. <laughs> but it, it the titles are provocative, you know. They get you thinking. Yeah, they do. And then not only do you think about what it is, but you have to think about what it how it relates to the music, you know, and kind of what he feels and, or how he's feeling about that composition. Yeah. I w- the last title, um, where it says like dreams, what is it? Dreams once buried. Hold on. Mm. Hold on. I got to wait for it to go. Dreams once buried in a, in the dungeon. Yeah. Dreams once buried beneath the dungeon, uh, slowly sprout into undying gardens or whatever. That's, right. That's a really yeah. good title. I have a feeling that one, like, Dungeons is referring to because you know when he was making music with Outcast in yeah. with the Dungeon family and everything like in the Dungeon like that's what they call it. So I think he was that's making reference to, you know, that career then like that rap career was just a seed sprouting to like where I am now where, it, like yeah, you know what I'm saying. So he talked about that in the GQ interview as well. Okay, he said, um, "This is this is a Dungeon family record." Much. Oh shit! Okay, yeah. That's so cool. like, it's it is not, cool. Like everything that they've made thus far is just uh, different iterations of that lane. So okay, it's um, it is it is kind of beautiful that he would put that in there and 
pay homage a little bit to yeah. you know his roots and where mm-hmm. he came up from definitely um which is nice and it goes back to what i was saying about progression is like this is this is what he's doing now but it didn't come from nowhere yeah it came from you know the talent and the creativity that they were all kind of brewing back yeah. then with the dungeon family family so yeah it is nice yeah, yeah I, I thought that was cool I didn't even know that so that's pretty cool to learn actually like, yeah that's really cool because I was thinking like oh you know just dream sprouting out but the fact that it's more personal than that you know because I didn't watch the interview and uh I didn't even know that they were called like the dungeon family or anything like that. yeah I yeah. listened to a lot of like outcast and stuff and I didn't even know that it was is that an outcast thing or is yeah. that yeah yeah it, un- outcast, outcast goody mob of think of it like um Jid, Earth Gang, um, how they have like Spillage Village. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly. so they had, exactly. oh, so yeah, they exactly had their own thing called the Dungeon. Yo, that's yeah, wicked. yeah. So yeah. It, was, it was like Outcast, Goody Mob, Organized Noise, um, Sleepy Brown. Yo. Sleepy Brown might be part of Organized Noise, but yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to freaking check those out, bro. What yeah. the heck? Yeah, yeah, bro. It is. They are good. They're good albums. I never knew that. That's sick. Yeah, yeah. you know CeeLo Green. Yeah, CeeLo Green. Forget you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so CeeLo Green is um, he's part of Goody Mob, who is part of Dungeon Family. What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> have, what? have you ever heard the song "Get Up, Get Out" by Outkast? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. So CeeLo's rapping on that. CeeLo used to rap. He didn't used to sing. Actually, actually, you're right because I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I heard that and I saw that CeeLo was on that and I was like, whoa. Yeah. But I didn't know. I just thought that that was a different time for him. I thought he like <laughs> he's going through a phase. Yeah, you know, like kind of, you know, like the start of loose tea. You know, it's like you kind of break out of shit. You yeah. know, it's like you know, but um, that's funny. Yeah, and yeah. so CeeLo is Lo, part of Dungeon Family. That's so crazy. I didn't know that CeeLo and Andre were that close like that. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Bro. So yeah, it is. It is interesting too to see that because CeeLo obviously went like the pop route mm-hmm. and kind of yeah, he sold out a little bit. I, I won't say that, <laughs> like, entirely, like, with confidence, just because <laughs> he, he did still have, you know, some creativity to what he was doing, mm. mm-hmm. and he, he stayed himself for the most part, but, um, I mean, he kind of went straight pop, you know, outcast went their way, and then the rest of them no one ever knows about, um, which is great. <laughs> Other than organized noise, who did they they did they produce for a, a lot of people? Yeah, they produced for Wu Tang, didn't they? I don't know. Am I thinking they, about someone else? They might have done Wu Tang. I know they did like TLC and yeah. they've they produced for a lot of people. Yeah. That's but crazy. I mean producers never get recognition anyway. Usually so. not. But Sleepy yeah. Brown I think does vocals on a lot of people's songs too. So he gets Yeah. He gets like those credits and stuff too. If you're in the biz, you know. Yeah. But other than that, like no, organized noise doesn't have like a mainstream following. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Neither do I. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Shout not out yet. Loose T. Shout out Luminous Records. <laughs> Lucas yes, Kenny in the house. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, what do you guys want to see after this? A rap album. I mean, of course, a rap album. Hell yeah! yeah. That I want to see. I want to see him going hootie hoo. Yeah. <laughs> do you do you want to see him back with Big Boy? I would love. I would love that. that. Yeah, I would love yeah. to see that. And so, do you think it's like it needs to be an album, or would you be cool if it, he was just on a feature run like J Cole? He's been doing that though. He's that's, had a ton of features. That's true. Yeah. I mean, he does have a he does have a ton of features. But like, what if he just continued doing that and never put out? another hip-hop album just like kept doing hip-hop features features me personally i prefer album yeah i would love to see an album like an outcast album for sure but also i wouldn't be mad if he does another jazz like i've accepted that we're never gonna get a rap album from andre so i'm like i'm living with the fact that that's gonna happen yeah because it's probably what's gonna happen Mm. so like i'm cool with another another jazz album too but what i truly want in my heart is a rap album from Andre. yeah (laughs) so yeah i'd be cool both even if it's like an A B sided, <laughs> one half is hip hop, the other half is the Bro. jazz stuff. Like I'd be like, sure. He could do a three disc one. I'd take rap, singing, and then jazz. He'd be like, I'd take a three disc Andre album. Yeah, <laughs> easy. Yeah, yeah. I don't think 
that ever happens though. I don't think he don't maybe think so maybe if he does if he does do a rap album, I don't think it'd be with Big Boy. Um probably not. It, they'll probably do a song, maybe, or he'll have like an interlude. Mm. Um Yeah, I could see the interlude for sure. Yeah. Yeah. They'll do an interlude. But is he just like retired or something? Who Big Boy? Mm. Mm-hmm. No, it's just bad blood. You know what's funny is they're bad blood. What do you mean? They're cool. Are they? Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you Big know what's Boy funny tweet is, about the album and everything. It's kind of. It reminds me of the Key and Peele sketch of Big Boy and Andre. When yeah, <laughs> they're bad. Yeah, kind of came to fruition a little bit. Like, it, no, it did. He's that, a little. That out sketch there. was pretty accurate. Yeah. 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 He's like, I'm gonna make. Uh, what is it? He said I was gonna make an album with just metal screeches. <laughs> Dude, that shit is so weird now. (laughs) That shit's so weird to look back on. Because when did that come out? Oh, man. That was like... Peel was popping like 2015, I want to say. that's so funny. That's so funny, dude. They They really predicted Yeah, yeah. (laughs) That's so funny. Key and Peel, though. Those guys are funny. (laughs) I mean, he kind of did it. He He did. He kind of did. He kind of did. did. That's hella funny. Good for him. Good for him. Good for them for predicting that. <laughs> yeah, for real. That sketch is probably going to like point. pick up traction again after this album. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have anything else to say about the album? I cannot wait to go on a hike and um, be a fun guy and uh, yep. listen to the album. Yeah. Can Especially. I, can we both be fun guys and listen to the album? Of course. Can we get one of those places that like an you were showing me the other day? Oh, over and, here? Then, and then we'd be fun guys at that place with the album. That'd be sick. What, what I don't think talk- they have I feel like time. you're talking about a crack house. That's no, exactly no. what it is. No, <laughs> no <laughs> it's the complete opposite <laughs> of a crack house, actually. <laughs> Let's get one of those places. <laughs> the complete opposite yeah. of a crack house. We definitely okay. have to. We have to just put all of our money together for those. I know. Those that's are really expensive. We just but, don't have money. I mean, shout out, shout out to them, I guess. <laughs> you, are you guys talking about like a cabana? What's going on? Uh, kind of. What are you talking about Wander? app it's like a traveling app this is not sponsored by the way yeah yeah this is sponsored by one not this is not sponsored use code k i mean i and get myself 500 percent off I'm an ambassador they'll pay you <laughs> to <laughs> go into these people's homes and hey, look, just, take just, shit just to just check that out just check that out um oh what but the they're fuck? ridiculously expensive ridiculously though but apparently expensive. tyler's an ambassador i'm an ambassador Vermont? of the company so if you want to travel you're an ambassador what does that mean uh, I invested in them before they went public. Oh, yeah, so I helped them come to fruition. I mean, how did how did not you a whole s- lot, but yeah. how did you say that you saw like did they reach out to you or like what happened? I forget what you um, said. I was on the app store and I was looking at travel apps, you know. Yeah, and this app was like still in development, Are you but okay it was with available, that? and I was like, "What is this?" You got that? Oh, it is in Tahoe Slopes. Yo, let's go. You got that? Yeah. See. But this is why, imagine all of Luminous Records puts money together, and we just go on a trip, and we shoot music videos at like these five locations. Of them. Like five of them. Each location comes with a Tesla. Listen, man, I just did my budget yesterday. It's tough. It's, tough. <laughs> it's real tough. <laughs> I'm going right to tell you right now. But, but each place comes with a Tesla, like all this stuff. It comes know? with a te- What? Yeah, yeah, every location comes with a Tesla. So Sponsored you- by Wander. <laughs> <laughs> Wander sponsor us. Like, look, 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 look. If you, uh, okay. You don't even have to give us money. Just let us hang out for a day. Yeah, for real. Just let us film music videos there. But yeah, so uh, we can travel there, do music videos, and do fun guy, be fun guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's and, be some uh, fun guys, some Kawhi Leonard's. Yeah, and listen to the album. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Or we could just do an Airbnb up in Tahoe over I'm by um, Olympic Olympic Valley. It's a pretty cool location. I'm with that too. Yeah. Because uh, the cabin that I got for your bachelor party was like six something. So that's if all good. of us pitch in, that's only like a hundred each. Yeah. How long did we have it for? Do you remember? A night. Was it one or two? I don't know. You booked it. I can't remember. <laughs> that was, that <laughs> was like me? that was like three years ago. <laughs> that's like a yeah. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Do you have like an outro or something? Um. Let's do plugs. Everybody, go search, uh, Kenny Moss anywhere you listen to music, and search. K Hoops on YouTube and on anywhere YouTube. you listen to podcasts and go peep uh, Loose T's Instagram as well as Luminous Records Instagram 
And actually, I'm going to link your TikTok also. Bet. Tyler is a DJ and makes super sick TikToks, reveals samples and everything. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, go follow Tyler's TikTok. What plugs do you have? Yeah, come to my house and suck my dick. Other than that, Peep Lucas on Bander City Fitted. <laughs> <laughs> he spits his ass off. Um, yeah, go yeah, go it. stream some, some of Lucas's music, man. I don't have anything out right now. On He's got features. SoundCloud. Run up our SoundCloud, bro. We got hits after hits, literally. Okay, thank you. And as we say at, at the end of all these videos, <laughs> punch that like button. <laughs> Hit subscribe. Hit subscribe. And suck it. If you guys want us to review Outcast's other albums, comment and everything. Yes. And Please. suck it. <laughs> All right, bro. Real quick. Vagina. The slang word pussy versus the scientific word vagina. Tyler, where do you stand? No, you have to read. Okay, okay. Would you like to read it? I'll read it. Sure. The slang word pussy rolls off the tongue with far better ease than the proper word vagina. Do you agree, Tyler? You know. Kenny? I'm going to s- Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say I'm going to say uh yeah. But <laughs> but but Okay, what's the caveat? I'm going to say yes because it's like it's like a it's a social thing. And and I think and I think that may be what he's trying to get to with his question. It's like we as a society have made pussy sound, or we have made that word so much more comfortable or feel so much more comfortable. And uh, the word vagina feels kind of more of like a taboo or it's like a scientific Interesting. term. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that's kind of what he was getting at. It's like we as a society are kind of what, like we're making this happen for ourselves. It's easier you know? to say pussy than vagina. Yeah. And I think in, it's, it's in just a product context, of our environment. In context know? to most things. In context to most things. In context to most things, I'm saying pussy. I'm not saying vagina. Like, if you're a doctor. Yeah. You know? Or, you know? and you know, If I'm a doctor, I'm saying know. pussy. Yeah, exactly. If, I, if I'm an OBGYN. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. All day, every day. <laughs> yeah. Let me yeah. see that pussy. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, my you would get fired so fast. Like, <laughs> not a great way. <laughs> right? Like that. Like that. Just you know. It makes sense. You use yeah. people say, and just normal people. That's what I would say is. even like people maybe who are more conservative with their words. They're not really saying vagina that right. much either. Right. You kind of like avoid pussy. the word. Yeah. You'd be like. I want to love you. I want to do some things you yeah. ain't never seen before. You know, type thing. You know what I'm saying? You're like, you're not. It's either that or you're like, damn, baby, I'm trying to smack on that pussy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like. We're saying pussy a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. We're saying pussy a lot more. And that's yeah. why it feels more comfortable. It rolls off the tongue easier. So I do agree. 